Welcome again to the Medical Terminology Podcast. This episode is Chapter 5, Part 4, Pathology of the Blood Vessels. Some of the terms relating to blood vessel pathology are very straightforward. You can get them from the word parts. We do have a few that are not so obvious, so I am going to go over those with you. The first term is a hemangioma. H-E-M-A-N-G-I-O-M-A. Now this word will parse out if you look at it. It's composed of hemo, H-E-M slash O, angio, A-N-G-I slash O, and the suffix oma, O-M-A. Now, if you remember what these word parts mean, oma is a tumor, angio refers just to blood vessels in general, and hemo refers to blood. So this would be a tumor made of blood vessels. Specifically, it's a tumor made of newly formed blood vessels. The next term is hypoperfusion, and that's composed of hypo, H-Y-P-O, and perfusion, P-E-R-F-U-S-I-O-N. Now, perfusion just refers to the flow of blood through a body part. If we have hypoperfusion, that means we have less than normal flow of blood through a body part. The next term is a long one, peripheral vascular disease, peripheral, P-E-R-I-P-H-E-R-A-L, then vascular, V-A-S-C-U-L-A-R, and finally, disease. Peripheral vascular disease is a situation where we have a narrowing of blood vessels that carry blood to the legs, arms, stomach, kidneys, etc., Peripheral refers to the periphery of the body, and vascular, of course, refers to the vascular system, the blood vessels. So blood just is not going to get as effectively to the outer parts of the body as we would like in peripheral vascular disease. Now, a related term is peripheral arterial occlusive disease. Peripheral, again, is P E R I. P-H-E-R-A-L, arterial, A-R-T-E-R-I-A-L, occlusive, O-C-C-L-U-S-I-V-E, and then disease. Well, peripheral again refers to the outer parts of the body. Arterial refers to artery. Occlusive refers to a closing off or a blocking of a vessel. And then disease is a disease, right? Something's wrong. In this situation, peripheral arteries are clogged up with plaque because of atherosclerosis. And because the peripheral arteries are clogged up with plaque, they close off and so blood does not get to the periphery of the body. The next term is Raynaud's phenomenon. R-A-Y-N-A-U-D apostrophe S and then phenomenon P-H-E-N-O-M-E-N-O-N. Raynaud's phenomenon is an intermittent attack of arterial occlusive disease that usually is brought on by cold or stress. So it is an intermittent attack, meaning it happens suddenly and then goes away. The arteries block off suddenly and then are unblocked. And what happens during this brief attack is one will get pallor, meaning a whiteness, grayishness of the skin, cyanosis, it can blue out because of lack of blood. And then when the blood rushes back in after the attack is over, there will be redness of the skin. Next, we have another tricky one to spell, I think. It's aneurysm. A-N-E-U-R-Y-S-M, aneurysm. An aneurysm is a balloon-like enlargement of the wall of an artery that's usually caused by a weak spot. 
Okay, and now we have a couple pairs of terms which can be quite tricky, so we need to be really careful of these. The first one is thrombus, T-H-R-O-M-B-U-S, and we did talk about that before. A thrombus is a clot. Now we have a related term, thrombosis, T-H-R-O-M-B-O-S-I-S. And if you remember, the suffix osis means an abnormal condition. So thrombosis is the abnormal condition of having a clot. So if you have a thrombus somewhere, but you don't want it, then you have a condition of thrombosis. So you need to be careful about the usage, using the right word in the right context. Okay, and the other pair is embolus and embolism. Embolus, E-M-B-O-L-U-S, we did talk about before. And an embolus is a foreign object circulating in the blood. Notice that embolus is a more general term than thrombus. And embolus could be any foreign object. It could be a clot. It could be a piece of tissue. It could be an oxygen bubble. Anything floating through the bloodstream that should not be there. Now, embolism, E-M-B-O-L-I-S-M, is the term for a blockage of a blood vessel by an embolus. So an embolism is the condition of having an embolus that is blocking a vessel. So be very careful in your study of those terms. The difference between an embolism and an embolus, the difference between a thrombosis and a thrombus, and of course the difference between embolus thrombus and embolism thrombosis. Okay, well that covers the tricky terminology related to blood vessel pathology. And now let's go ahead and look at some of the tricky terms related to blood pathology. The first one I'd like to review with you is polycythemia. P-O-L-Y-C-Y-T-H-E-M-I-A. That is a hard one to get from the word parts. We do know that emia, E-M-I-A, would mean a blood condition. Poly, P-O-L-Y, would mean more than one. But that middle part, scythe, C-Y-T-H-E, or C-Y-T-H, we really haven't seen. Well, what this term means is an abnormal increase in the number of red cells in the blood due to an excess production. Now, that's different from an anemia, which we're going to see a little later. Anemia, A-N-E-M-I-A, it's the lower than normal number of red blood cells. The next term is a long one, and it can be a little tricky to spell. It's thrombocytopenia, T-H-R-O-M-B-O-C-Y-T-O-P-E-N-I-A. Now, I'd like you to look at this and ask yourself, how would this parse into its word parts? Because if we can parse it, this word is not as threatening as it might look. Do you have it? Well, it would parse as thrombo, T-H-R-O-M-B-O, plus cyto, C-Y-T-O, and then the suffix penia, P-E-N-I-A. Now ask yourself, what do these word parts mean? Well, thrombo refers to clot or clotting. Cyto refers to cell. So the term combined right there is thrombocyte. 
we're talking about one of those clotting cells, one of the formed elements of the blood. And then we have the suffix penia, P-E-N-I-A, and I hope you remember that that means less than normal. So thrombocytopenia would be a situation where we have less than the normal amount of clotting cells. So when you're asked for a term, what is the condition for the less than normal amount of clotting cells, think of the word parts that are embedded in that, less than the normal amount clotting cells, and then you can pull that term together. Similarly, when you're trying to spell it, think of the word parts, put it together part by part, don't seize and say, oh my god, it's a really long word, okay? Now we have a related term, thrombocytosis. Can you take a guess at what thrombocytosis is? This is a little bit harder, but what do you think that is? Well, thrombocytosis has, again, thrombocyte in it, and then it's got that suffix abnormal condition. Now, abnormal condition, you know, is a little fuzzy. Sometimes that suffix gets co-opted to a specific meaning, and this is one of those cases. We wouldn't say this is the abnormal condition of having a clotting cell. That doesn't make sense. You want to have a clotting cell. What thrombocytosis means is an abnormal increase in the number of platelets or clotting cells. It is the opposite of thrombocytopenia. Penia would mean less than normal or deficiency. Here they're using osis, abnormal condition, but they're co-opting it and making it mean more than. And that does sometimes happen with osis and also pathy. So that's why I'm presenting this to you because this is a term that doesn't strictly follow the rules. Okay? Thrombocytosis is an abnormal increase in the number of platelets. Okay, and then the next one we have is hyperlipidemia. H-Y-P-E-R-L-I-P-I-D-E-M-I-A. And looking at that word, can you parse it down and take a guess at what it means? Well, hyper means too much. Lipid or lipido would refer to a fat. And emia means a blood condition. So this is the blood condition of having too much fat in the blood. It's elevated levels of fatty substances in the blood. We're most commonly concerned with elevated levels of cholesterol. And that leads us to a little discussion of cholesterol. And if you look at your book in page 144, we have this table 5.2, interpreting cholesterol levels. And this is something that everyone's heard of, but it's very easy to get confused. If you look at the chart, we have the low density lipoprotein, the LDL, which is referred to as the bad cholesterol because you don't want to have too much of that because that leads to the atherosclerosis. Then we have the high density lipoprotein, the HDL, which is the good cholesterol because it can carry the unneeded cholesterol back to the liver and it does not contribute to plaque buildup. In fact, if you have high levels of the good cholesterol, that can really offset uh, levels of the bad cholesterol. Now, I've got a little mnemonic that at least helps me to keep these guys straight. Well, if something is high density, I think of that as having a lot of mass, a lot of weight. High density, it's, it's very dense, it's heavy, it has mass. And because it has mass and density, it ha it's like a bowling ball. And it rolls through the arteries and it can sweep them clean. Keep that visualization. High density, heavy, like a bowling ball. It sweeps right through 
the arteries and cleans them out. That is the good cholesterol. That's what you want to have happen. So if I can remember high density sweeps things out like a bowling ball, then that will tell me that that's good. And so then that makes it easy to remember, well, then the opposite of that is low density. The guys that aren't very heavy, they don't sweep through, they tend to stick to the walls, and that's bad. We don't want that to happen. The next term is leukemia, L-E-U-K-E-M-I-A. And we've probably all heard of this term. It's used a lot in the common vernacular. It's a type of cancer. We know from the suffix emia means blood condition, and Luke, leuco refers to what? What does leuco refer to? It refers to white, and in this context of the blood, it would have to be white blood cells. So leukemia is a blood condition of the white blood cells. Specifically, it's a cancer characterized by excessive numbers of white blood cells, which can cause problems. Leukemia, excessive numbers of white blood cells. And then we have the anemias, and we already talked about anemia. What is anemia? A-N-E-M-I-A? Well, that is lower than normal number of erythrocytes, or red blood cells. And then there's quite a few different types of anemias that they talk about here. And if we look at these, they can be interpreted by looking at the word parts. The first one is aplastic anemia, A-P-L-A-S-T-I-C, and anemia, A-N-E-M-I-A. Aplastic. Well, A means without. Plastic has a combination of plasia and ick. And if you remember from chapter 2, I hope that plasia refers to development. So aplastic would mean a lack of development. Aplastic anemia, then, is the absence or lack of cell development in the blood. Specifically, it's the lack of all formed elements in the blood. The next one is hemolytic anemia, H-E-M-O. L-Y-T-I-C, anemia. So this anemia, or lack of blood cells, red blood cells, is caused something to do with hemolytic. Now let's parse that. What does hemolytic mean? What does that break down into? Well, that breaks down into hemo, H-E-M slash O, plus the suffix lytic, and do you remember what those mean? Well, hemo's blood, and that lysis or lytique would be the condition of the degeneration or breakdown. So hemolytic refers to the degeneration or breakdown of blood. So in this case, the anemia or the lack of red blood cells is caused because the red blood cells are prematurely breaking down. They're breaking down before their time. And if they're breaking down faster than they can be created, then you're going to have an anemia. Okay, and then we have the other terms in there I would tell you to go ahead and study in order to get the different types of anemias down. Okay, so let's now go ahead and do some practice. What is the term for a balloon-like enlargement of the wall of an artery? That's an aneurysm. A-N-E-U-R-Y-S-M. What is the term for a tumor made up of newly formed blood vessels. That's a hemangioma, H-E-M-A-N-G-I-O-M-A. 
What is the term for a clot? That's a thrombus. T H R O M B U S. What is the term for an inadequate flow of blood through a body part? That's hypoperfusion. H Y P O P E R F. U S I O N. And what is the term for a condition where one has a narrowing of blood vessels that carry blood to the arms, legs, or stomach or kidneys, for example? That's peripheral vascular disease. P E R I. P H E R A L V A S C U L A R disease D I S E A S E. What is the term for the condition of having abnormally low amounts of blood platelets in the blood? That's thrombocytopenia, T-H-R-O-M-B-O-C-Y-T-O-P-E-N-I-A. What is the term for the abnormal condition of having a blockage in a blood vessel that's caused by a foreign object? That's an embolism, E-M-B-O-L-I-S-M. -S and what is the term for the blockage itself? That is the thing or foreign object that is doing the blocking. Well, that's an embolus, E-M-B-O-L-U-S. And what is the term for the abnormal condition of having a blood clot? That's thrombosis. T-H-R-O-M-B-O-S-I-S. What is the term for an intermittent attack of arterial occlusi disease that's caused by cold or stress? That's Raynaud's phenomenon, R-A-Y-N-A-U-D apostrophe S, P-H-E-N-O-M-E-N-O-N. -E -E what is the term for abnormally high amounts of fats in the blood? That's hyperlipidemia. H-Y-P-E-R-L-I-P-I-D-E-M-I-A. And what is the term for a condition of having excessively high amounts of blood platelets in the blood? That's thrombocytosis. T -H -R -O -M B O C Y T O S I S. What is the term for having an abnormally low amount of red blood cells in the blood? That's anemia, A N E M I A. What is the term for a condition where one's blood vessels in the, that go to the legs, arms, etc., are clogged up with plaque?
that's peripheral arterial occlusive disease. P E R I P H E R A L A R P E R I A L O C C L U S S I V E disease. And what is the term for abnormally high number? of red blood cells in the blood. That's polycythemia, P-O-L-Y-C-Y-T-H-E-M-I-A. And what is the term for a type of cancer in which there are excessive numbers of white blood cells? That's leukemia, L-E-U-K-E-M-I-A. And what is the term for a type of anemia that's caused because the red blood cells break down prematurely? That's the hemolytic anemia, H-E-M-O-L-Y-T-I-C, Okay, well, that about does it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and look at some of the procedures. This ends this episode of the Medical Terminology Podcast. (laughs) 